Hey everyone, Mr. Voikin here. This is Unit 4, Lesson 1.2, and we will be looking at one and two step equations. But first, we are going to review the last lesson, 1.1, uh, where we were just trying to make the left side equal to the right side. And remember that these three questions that are in the review are going to be very similar to what will be on the quiz or the summative at the end of this unit. So let's take a look at question uh, number one. So we have y equals uh, y, except I have this minus seven, so it is not actually equal. To make it equal, I'm going to add seven to this side, eliminating those two, and now both sides are equal. Example number two, I've got a negative r divided by 2. Now, in this case, uh, most students would want to just say it's negative r times, or sorry, divided by 2. So we're going to multiply by 2, eliminating these two. But if you look right there, we, we actually don't have uh, both sides equal. Because on the left, I've got a negative r. And on the right, I have a positive r. So what we want to do in this case, actually, is we can uh, multiply by a negative 2. And by multiplying by a negative 2, it's going to cancel that 2, and it's also going to cancel that minus sign right there, leaving us with both sides equal at r equals r. Okay, and let's take a look at the third example, in which case we have uh, two different steps to do. So in the first case, to make it both sides equal, I will add 5, canceling these two. I've got 3n equals 3n. And now, in order to end up with just an n here, because it's 3n, 3 times n, I will divide by 3, eliminating those, and I end up with an n minus n. Okay, so I have uh, three examples on the right-hand side that I would like you to pause the video, try, and then return to check out how well you did. All right, so here are the answers to the questions you were working on, and hopefully you got them correct. Okay, moving on to the content in this lesson, we are going to look at solving one-step equations. So in this case, uh, we're going to look at uh, one-step equations with addition and subtraction. And our ultimate goal here is to determine the value of x. So many of you will be able to look at uh, example number one, and you'll see that there's an equal sign. And remember what I told you, whatever's on the left has to equal whatever's on the right. So in this case, on the right-hand side, I've got a negative 7. So what we're trying to do is figure out, well, what is the value of x so that the left side will equal negative 7? And if I have 14 minus 21, that is negative 7, which equals negative 7. And we have both sides that are equal. Now, the problem is, how did we get there? We can quite often see that in our head, but how do we perform the mathematics so that when the numbers are more complex, we can uh, solve this uh, very efficiently. Well, what I want to ultimately do is on the left-hand side, I want to have a variable. So one variable, one x, one t, one n, only one of them. And on the right-hand side, I want to have a number. So like one x is equal to what value? So you can see on the left-hand side, we've got this x right here. So that's good. It's a variable. We want it to stay. But this 14, we need to get rid of it. We do not want it there. So this is a positive 14. So this is where the inverse operations are going to come into play. I want to eliminate that. So negative 14, and I now eliminate that 14 from this, the left-hand side. Now I have x equals negative 7, but that is not correct, and that's because this equal sign, remember, to keep something equal, I have to do uh, the same to both sides. So if I subtracted 14 from the left, 
I need to subtract 14 from the right. So what I ultimately end up with is an x equals negative 7 minus 14, which is negative 21. Now I'm going to perform a check and show you how to uh, make that check. And I'll do it on the first two examples, and then to speed things up, I won't perform the check on the rest of them. So what we want to do is we have solved that x is equal to negative 21. So we just want to go back to our original equation and substitute that x with a negative 21. So I like to write it out again like this. So it's 14 plus, and wherever that variable is, it's a good idea to put just some brackets, equals negative 7. Now what I want to do is I want to take this uh, negative 21 that I have right there, and I want to put it inside the brackets. So I've got 14, a positive 14, plus a negative 21, which is a negative 7, and that does equal negative 7. So our check has uh, confirmed that our work was done correctly. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, next example. I'll just move this out of my way. There we go, move the check over to the side here. So example number two, I've got a uh, negative x plus five equals 12. And again, remember what we want to end up with is um, one x is equal to what number? So again, I don't want that negative five to be on the, or positive five to be on the left, so I'm gonna subtract five. And because I've got this equal sign here, Whatever I do to the left, I need to do to the right. On the left-hand side, these cancel each other out, and I'm left with a negative x equals positive 7. So the problem is we have a negative x equals. I want a positive x equals. Now, if we ever get to this situation, really what's in front of there is a, a negative 1. So you would perform a second operation by dividing both sides by negative 1. So divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. These would cancel each other, leaving x on that side and a negative 7 on the other side. But ultimately, uh, what you really want to be able to do is just look at this, realize you have a negative x equals 7, therefore, so therefore, x equals negative 7. Okay, now again to perform the check on this, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a negative bracket bracket. Again, the brackets are really important in this case that they go where the x is. Plus 5 equals 12. Okay, now a negative 7 is going to go into the place, into the brackets where the x was. And what I've got is a negative, negative 7. And two negatives are going to make a positive. So now I have a positive 7 plus 5, which equals positive 12, and everything is correct. Okay, again, I'll move this out of my way, and we'll move on to example number 3. Okay, so in example uh, number three here, we've got an x minus nine equals negative nine. So what do I want to do? We'll speed things up. I'm going to add nine. I'm going to add nine. I need to do it to both sides to keep things equal. It's going to cancel on the left. And what I have left on the left-hand side is an x equals and a negative nine plus nine is going to be zero. And one more, uh, two more. Example number four, I've got a negative four plus x equals 11. So on the left-hand side, I only want that x to be there. So I'm going to add four, eliminating that. But because the equal sign is there, whatever I do to the left, I need to do to the right. And I end up with now an x equals 11 plus four, which is 15. And remember, we can just perform... Uh, the substitution by replacing that x with 15 and making sure that the left equals the right. 
Okay, the last equation here, uh, I've got a, uh, I want to have a negative, or sorry, an x on the left-hand side, that five needs to go, so I'm gonna subtract five, subtract five from the other side, realize that I have a negative x equals 16 minus five, which is 11, and remember what we did before, if we see negative x equals positive 11, therefore, a positive x is going to equal negative 11. So the negative sign just sort of switched positions. Okay, so there are five examples that I did, and here are four examples on the right-hand side for you to perform. Pause the video and come back and check how well you did. Okay, there's the completed work, and hopefully you had some success. All right, everyone, so let's take a look at uh, solving one-step equations with multiplication and division. So uh, we can go a little bit faster on this one because we've learned that ultimately what we're trying to end up with is x equals some number, and we can see that, that negative 4, we need to deal with that using inverse operations. So in this case, it's negative four times x. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by negative four and whatever I do to the left, I need to do to the right. So in this case, negative four divided by negative four is a value of one. So I just have one x right there. And on the right hand side, I have 16 divided by four, which equals four. Now again, just like with the addition and subtraction, we can perform a check using substitution. So I go back to my original question or equation, which is negative four times x. So I'm gonna put a bracket like that equals 16. And then I will inside that bracket, insert my uh, value. Ooh, I can see I made a mistake right here because I divided on the left-hand side by negative four. I also have to divide the right-hand side by negative four. So 16 divided by negative 4 gives us a value of negative 4. So x equals negative 4, not positive 4. So inside this bracket right here, I'm going to put negative 4. So what do I have on the left-hand side? I've got negative 4 times negative 4, which is a positive 16. And 16 equals 16. So our self-check uh, would have found that error that I, uh, I made initially. Okay, let's move on to example number two. And we're looking at x divided by five equals negative four. So what is the opposite? We're going to multiply by five. Whatever I do to the left, I need to do to the right. On the left, those fives will cancel, leaving us with x equals negative four times five, which is negative 20. And in example number three, I've got negative x. So here's that negative in front of the x again. So we're probably going to end up with a negative x equals, and we can just swap the negatives or swap the signs uh, to find out what the value of a positive 1x equals. So in this case, it's negative x divided by 10. So what am I going to do? I'm going to multiply both sides by 10, eliminating the 10s, and I have a negative x equals 70 and if I see negative x equals I can assume therefore that x equals negative 70. Okay and we have two more examples to perform before you try the student work on the right. Uh, question number four says three times x equals 33 so the inverse operation to get rid of that three is going to be divide by three. Whatever I do to the left I do to the right. The threes cancel each other out, leaving me with an x equals 11. And again, if I was to perform a uh, check, I would just go back to my original question, which is 3 times x equals 33. We calculated that x equals 11, so I'll put that inside the brackets. And now I can see that 3 times 11 is 33, and 33 does equal 33, so I know that my work was correct. Okay, so 
Even though this one is on multiplication and division, I'm throwing in one uh, question here where it says x squared equals uh, 49. So it's basically like what number squared will equal 49? Well, I know that 7 squared is 7 times 7, which equals 49. So in this case, we can see that x is going to equal 7. But again, what do we do in order to uh, perform the calculations if the numbers are a little bit more complex and you can't just see it very easily. Well, remember what we're going to do. We're going to take the square root of the x squared. And what does that leave us with? An x. Okay, but whatever I do to the left, I need to do to the right. So what is the square root of 49? So that basically breaks down to the square root of 79 is what two numbers will multiply together to give you 49. They have to be the same number. In this case, that is 7. 7 times 7 is 49. So 49 is what we call a perfect square. And you should know all the perfect squares. It's going to be 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and 100. Okay, so here we go. Um, on the right-hand side, I have four questions for you to try. Pause the video and return when you are finished. Okay, here are the answers, and hopefully you did all right. Uh, the last one, t squared equals 121. The square root of 121 is 11, because 11 times 11 is 121. Okay, so hopefully you found uh, solving one-step equations uh, easy. And now we're moving on to solving two-step equations, again, to end up with a value uh, for the unknown variable. So, again, we're going to want to refer back to uh, lesson 1.1, where we need to know which inverse operation to perform first. And, you know, you can use memorization to remember which one to do first, but really the uh, best thing to do is just practice, practice, and more practice. So let's start off with question number one, where we're looking at 3x minus 5 equals 7. Again, on the left-hand side, what do I want? I want a variable. On the right-hand side, what do I want? A number. So what I need to do is get rid of that negative 5 and get rid of that 3, leaving me with just that x on the left. So the problem is, which one do I do first, divide by 3 or add 5? Well, again, if you remember the rules, uh, we want to add 5 to both sides. Okay, that's going to eliminate this, giving me 3x is equal to 12. Now, I don't want to know the value of 3x, I want to know the value of 1x. So to get rid of that 3, it's 3 times x. I divide both sides by 3 eliminating that, and I end up with x equals 4. Okay, so question uh, number 2. I've got 16 minus 5x equals 31. Again, what I'm going to want to do is get rid of that 16 and that negative 5. So I'm going to minus 16 from both sides, giving me a negative 5x equals 15. I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 5, and I end up with x equals negative 3. Okay, so example number 3. Let's see, we have x plus 6 over 5, or divided by 5, and remember I said if there's ever a fraction, we want to get rid of that number on the bottom. Eliminate that denominator. So the inverse operation is to multiply both sides by 5. We kill the 5 on the left. And I end up with x plus 6 equals 10. So I'm going to get rid of the 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides. And I end up with x equals 4. 
And again, uh, even with the two-step equations, I can perform some substitution to check. So what am I going to do? I take my x plus 6 divided by 5. That should equal 2. What is the value of the x? It is 4. So what I have right here is going to be a 10 over 5 equals 2. And you can see that 10 divided by 5 is 2. So our check has proven that our work is correct. Okay, let's move on to number 4, where it says we have 5 times 8 minus x, and it's in the brackets. So I'm going to deal with that 5 first by dividing both sides by 5. And now I have 8 minus x is equal to 3. In this case, I want to subtract 8 from both sides, and I've got a negative x is equal to negative 5. And be careful, there's that negative sign in front of the variable again. So we can say, therefore, positive x is equal to the opposite of negative 5, which is going to be positive 5. All right, this work is just encroaching a little bit too much on our next question. So we'll shrink her down, move her off to the, move her up a bit there. And we'll move on to question number five. And this one's a little bit complex, but you can see I've got an x plus 8 in brackets, but it's squared. Okay, so in this case, what I want to do is I want to get rid of that squared sign right now. Again, because I'll deal with what's in the brackets last. So I'm going to take the square root of this side and the square root of that side. The square root of something that is squared is going to just be that something, which in this case, happened to be the x plus 8 that was squared. On the other side, we have 16, and the square root of 16, which is a perfect square, is 4. Okay, I'm still not finished. I need to get rid of that uh, 8 right there, so I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, eliminating this, and I now have x equals negative 4. Okay, so we are done right here, and what you can now do is try the four questions on the right-hand side. You know what to do. Pause the video and come back to check your answers. Okay, so here are the answers, and hopefully you did well. Uh, definitely you're going to want to take a look at uh, question number three, you can see that uh, under the t, it's like t over 4, t divided by 4. And before I told you that, uh, like in example number three on the other side, well, hey, we want to get rid of that 5 first that's underneath, uh, you know, sort of in that denominator of that fraction. But if you look, the difference is that on the left-hand side, this is x plus 6 over 5. And the, the line is under the x and the 6. And on the question number 3 on the right-hand side, the line is only under the t. So that's sort of separate. The 4 is only on the bottom of the t. So the, in that case, uh, question number 3 on the right, we're going to get rid of the 6 first. I know it can be confusing at first, but remember what I said, practice, practice, and more practice. See you in class.